Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and you know something? I'm getting a little exhausted from making all these videos about Thanksgiving, but at the same time, I absolutely love it. So it's not even work, I love cooking. So I'm gonna tell you something. Today we're gonna make a wonderful other side dish for your Thanksgiving table, or for any time of the year. This thing is phenomenal. But it's gonna be centered around some butternut squash. I already have a wonderful acorn squash soup you happen in. There's a million butternut squash soups out there. I didn't see a whole lot of acorn squash soup, so that's gonna be a little bit unique. So therefore, we're gonna use butternut squash and a risotto. Yes, we're gonna make a wonderful creamy butternut risotto that's gonna make your head spin around. Not like in The Exorcist when it happens to her. We don't want that to happen, but it's gonna make it spin around like like an owl. Let's look at it like that. Th that's a nice calm way to look at it. It's phenomenal. It's ridiculously easy and the result at the end, unbelievable. In the instant pot we go. Let's do it. Creamy butternut risotto. So this is not gonna be a creamy butternut risotto without a butternut squash. We're gonna take one of these guys, make it about, I don't know, this thing's probably like two pounds maybe? It doesn't really matter. Just get one that's of a decent size, you see compared to my hand, and we're gonna chop it up. And then cut it into chunks just like this. We wanna do about four cups worth. Now, when you are cutting a squash, if you don't have those magic snapping capabilities like apparently I do, make sure you use a really good knife when cutting. I'm using like a good Wistoff knife here because um, these things are not easy to cut through and we also have to peel them and get the skin off the edges of the squash. So be very careful and just make sure you dice them up into pieces like this and then you can do whatever you want with the rest of the squash and the seeds. You can roast them, you can make a butternut squash soup, whatever suits you. Kind of looks like cantaloupe too, doesn't it? We're also gonna take one medium yellow onion also nice and diced up. Now, you might cry when you're chopping the onions, but I can guarantee you'll cry when you're cutting the butternut squash if you don't use a good knife and be careful, because again, that is a very hard thing to cut through, and we do not want you to slice your pretty little fingers open, so be very careful when cutting that squash. So now let's go to our Instant Pot and let's add in one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. Come down to the pot, now let's hit the saute function and adjust so we're on the more or the high setting. And then once the pot has heated up our oil and melted our butter and we get some bubbles going, let's add in our onions. And then just stir them up and cook for about two minutes until they soften a little bit. And then after a couple of minutes of our onions cooking in there, let's add in our squash. And coat that up with all the butter and oil and the onions. So our squash is gonna feel really firm to the touch right now, and that's completely normal. It should feel that way, but don't worry. It's gonna soften up a bit when it cooks in here for a few, and then when we pressure cook it, of course, as well. And then after about a minute of starting the squash with the onions, we're gonna add in some mushrooms. An eight ounce pack of some sliced baby bellies. And there you go. And then mix our mushrooms up so they're nice and combined with everything else in the pot. And after about a minute of that cooking with each other, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of crushed garlic. And then let's mix everything together, and then we're gonna let it set and stir for about another three minutes. Okay, and after about three minutes of everything cooking together, it's gonna look and start to smell amazing, and things are gonna begin cooking now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add in a half a cup of a dry white wine. And we can really use any kind of white wine that's dry. Um, you can even use some cooking wine. And now let's just let that simmer a little bit and let some of the alcohol in. And once it starts to bubble, just let it do it for about another minute or two. And then after a few minutes of it bubbling, we're going to add in two cups of arborio rice. That's the kind of rice you use for risotto. The stuff you want to use right here. And then mix our rice up with everything else in the pot. Make sure everything gets nice and blended together. So when we're all done, we're looking like that. Okay, now we're going to add in our broth. Now, you can really use any kind of broth you want. I'm gonna use four and a half cups of turkey broth, which is some better than bouillon base mixed with water, but you can also use chicken broth or even vegetable broth if you wanna keep this a vegetarian or vegan friendly meal. Now, let's get some seasoning in here. I'm gonna use one teaspoon of seasoned salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter of a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and a quarter of a teaspoon of dried parsley flakes. Stir everything together and get all those seasonings nice and blended. Now I'm gonna top everything off with five ounces of baby spinach and I'm just gonna lay it on top and rest it in. I'm not gonna mix it up. For those thinking, wow, it's really full to the top right now, don't worry, spinach cooks down into basically nothing. All right, let's get our lid on top. Here we go, let's turn it and make sure we're in sealing position. And then let's come down to our pot and hit keep warm cancel and then hit manual or pressure cook depending on your model. And we're gonna go up only for five minutes on high pressure. That's it. And now it's time to quick release. 
Okay, let's take our lid off. And, well, of course the spinach is gonna look like that on top, so let's mix everything together right now. All right, take a spoon and then just get, look at that. Unbelievable how everything just expands and all that liquid gets absorbed by the risotto. Let's mix all the spinach in with everything else and look at how gorgeous this is looking, guys. A phenomenal, already creamy, superb butternut risotto. Fabulous, let's just keep going and stirring it up. And we are really, really looking good here, guys. Okay, here's the final step, and if you're vegan, you can leave it out. To really tie everything together, we're going to add in a half a cup of a grated Parmesan cheese. That's right, let's get that inside there. I'm gonna stir everything together and let it get nice and combined. There you go. And look at that, our butternut squash is completely cooked down into softness, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. And it just looks like this gorgeous medley right now of greens and oranges and colors, everything combined. Let's transfer this to a serving bowl. And I'm transferring right to the bowl. Look at that. And all right, all right, all right. We are ready to serve. And let's get a look at that gorgeousness right there in a bowl. I mean, are you ready to eat this? Because I sure am. Okay guys, let's try this out. All right, it's time to play airplane with myself. Oh, wow, what a creamy, creamy risotto this is full of amazing goodies. I mean, we have our amazing butternut squash, which is completely softened. We have our spinach, we have mushrooms in here, we have some onions. It's a treasure trove of flavors. Mm. Mm. It's like an unbelievable secret garden. Not only is this gonna be an amazing side for any Thanksgiving table, it's gonna be an amazing main for any meal that you have any time of the year. It's that spectacular. The flavors are just a sum of so many parts. I mean, look at these beautiful mushrooms mixed in with everything. Mm. Oh, the texture is just spot on unbelievable. It's literally one of those foods you put in your mouth and you just get comfort out of it from how amazing the texture is. Oh, it's so rich and unbelievable. Yet at the same time, it's kind of light tasting. Mm. I love the Parmesan cheese mixed in with everything else. You can taste literally every single flavor. Mm, I taste the mushrooms. Mm, I taste the spinach. Mm, I taste the squash. An amazing thing about this is you can truly alter the flavors of it depending on what base you use. I use turkey base, but you can use chicken base, and you can make it 100% vegan and vegetarian by putting in vegetable base. And of course, keep it vegan by not adding in the Parmesan at the end, but I'll tell you what, I really think it adds to it. Brings everything together. Oh guys, this is so good. If you enjoy these easy to follow video recipes and if you want to see the written recipe, go to PressureLuckCooking.com, hover over any photo on any recipe, you'll see a little save button appear in the upper left corner. Pin that thing to any page you want on Pinterest that way. Like my Facebook page, go to Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking and like that page so you get updates on all recipes that come out, have funny humorous things on the page, tips about the Instant Pot, live videos, all you can want and then some. Follow me on Twitter at PressureLuck, subscribe to me on YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff. Thank you so much again for all your support. Yeah, the squash is called butternut, but the only thing that's nuts about this is if you don't make this dish, I'll tell you that. Mm.